Hello and welcome back to part two of Castle Brokenhead Presents Let's Play Dragon Quest. Well, since I last saw you, or since you last were with me, it has been 58 minutes of grinding for gold, 212 slimes and red slimes defeated, all to get the 341 gold necessary to buy the starting gear needed to leave the very first area. Now, before we actually buy the gear, it occurred to me that we never really spent much time getting to know our starting castle of Tantagel and surrounding area. So let's take a little tour. You may have noticed we can walk along the outside of the front of this. There's that single space. It's not particularly relevant now, but it may be relevant later. Hint, hint, viewers. You may have also noticed that since you last were with me, I've gained a few levels. I'm up at level 5. We gained our heal spell. Which heals you for about 15 to 20 hit points. Uh, we gained that at level 3. At level 4, we gained the Hurt spell, which does about 10 damage, plus or minus 1 or 2, uh, when used as an attack spell. Uh, you can see we've got a couple of merchants over here. See, there is a door in our way. You may have noticed last time we got a magic key. We won't see any of those for a long time to come yet. And by the time we get any magic keys and have been taunted by this, these four treasure chests for endless hours, we discovered that the only thing inside is sadness. Another door over here we can't get through. This guy over here is actually a key merchant. So you have to use a key to get to the guy who sells the keys in Tantagel Castle. This is just a little space. You can see there is no space outside of the castle. We can walk on that side. What I was telling you about this old man here earlier. If we go into our menu, cast a spell, we see that heal spell uses four magic points, and he restores our magic. One of the other things I failed to mention last time is that in order to save the game, According to the original NES, you come speak to King Lorik. I am greatly pleased that thou hast returned, Brokenhead. Before reaching thy next level of experience, thou must gain eight points. Wilt thou tell me now of thy deeds so they won't be forgotten? Yeah, sure, why not? And you see, he records your deeds on the Imperial Scrolls of Honor. And do we want to continue on our quest? Yes. Now, in the original NES cartridge, if you selected No, you actually had to hold down the reset button while you turn the power off. Otherwise, your entire save file could be deleted. Uh, with modern day technology and ROMs, we do have save states. I will not be manipulating those save states. Uh, they can be exploited for benefit, not running into enemies, getting the outcome you want. I'm not going to do that. I will use it for saving the game when I need to, uh, for the sake of the convenience of recording, uh, but not to gain any real benefit. So as you know, here we are in Breconary. This is our weapons and armor merchant. 340 gold was so that we could get one copper sword, one leather armor, and one small shield. 
Now, normally you would be able to buy all of those things individually as you gained enough money. Uh, for the sake of recording, though, I'm actually, every time I get to a new area, going to grind away for the gold to get the equipment off camera. Uh, that way you don't have to watch me spend endless hours grinding. Uh, here we see our stats. So we can see our attack and defense power and really get an idea of what a difference uh, each weapon makes. So we had the club previously. We're now going to get the copper sword. I know that. He buys the club back for half of what we paid for. It. Now we're going to take a quick look here. Our attack power went up significantly. Small shield, and our defense power goes from 8 to 12. Now we take our leather armor. And let's see what that does for us. We've now gone from 12 to 16. Now if we take a look around here we have people basically telling us introductory information like hit points poisonous marshes which we won't see just yet here's the inn where we get all our sleep or used to uh, until level three when we got our heal spell we actually had to rely on the sleep to heal ourselves and there are points later in the game where it's easier to just spend the gold at an inn. Uh, you know, the item shop is down here. This is where we got that dragon scale. Now, the herb. Uh, it's not smoked, I swear. 24 gold. I think it's probably the most expensive in this game out of all Dragon Quest games. And the it basically heals your hit points. And the torch for eight uh, lights up dark spaces. Uh, only other things worthy of note, uh, we didn't talk to these guys earlier. If you're ever cursed, come talk to this man. And of course, there is this house here with a locked door. And we never did speak to this soldier Beware the bridges. Danger grows when thou crosses. Uh, that's not entirely wrong, but it's not entirely right either. As we go to explore this region, you will see what I mean. There are some fairly regular enemies. Now, I did a lot of my level grinding around this open space as well because, well, frankly, I needed to. I'm not going to cut out the monster fights just yet uh, because there is a couple of monsters in the region I would like to show you. And the only way to do that is to find one and fight it. We'll get there. Now, when you are down here, be careful not to step into this last row beneath me here. Uh, the way this game is set up, the monsters exist within zones. And there are some overlaps. So that one line directly beneath me is actually part of a different area with stronger monsters. You can exploit that uh, for the sake of getting uh, more powerful monsters at the start and leveling up faster. It's one of the tricks necessary for making a speed run. It's another thing we won't be exploiting here uh, on my show. Now this is the Draki. We got a new monster here. Uh, he has about six hit points, an attack of nine, defense of six, speed of 15, just like the slimes. Uh, he gives two gold points and two experience points, so defeating him is kind of like defeating uh, two regular slimes. He has no special abilities, and all he can do is a straight attack. 
But that is one of our new monsters we have not seen yet. Uh, and now, we're going to go and continue touring the Tantagel region as we head north. We are going to find some cool stuff and we get a level up. Always love when those happen. Excellent. Power, hit points, magic. Those are the things we want. Those are the things we need. Uh, looking for one more new monster here. And once we've found that, I will be able to uh, start cutting out some fights. Uh, just to keep our runtime a little lower. And here we go. It's the ghost. Uh, ghosts have seven hit points. So they're a little tougher to kill than the Drakis. Their attack is 11, so they hit harder. A defense of 8. Speed is 15. They give an average of 4 gold and 3 experience. Again, no special abilities. All they can do is a straight attack. But since we're level 6 already, uh, with a copper sword... They are a quick and easy one-hit kill. Now, you may recognize this. Or recognize w something I was talking about earlier. It is dark in here. This is all the light we get. That's it. So if you do not know where you are going... This cave is no fun. Actually, none of the caves are any fun. When you can't see. Uh, you w will get a spell later on that will assist with that. And here we go. Now, it just so happens that I do have maps. I am fully capable of navigating. You can hear I keep walking into the walls anyway. Uh, but if you don't have a map, then you are really hurting yourself at this part. Uh, you're fumbling around trying to find a way. And that's how we had to do it back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, this was the first Nintendo game... I ever got. Uh, the Nintendo had already been out for about a year when I got my first NES console, and uh, I had played Dragon Quest 2 and 3 already, uh, but dr the original Dragon Warrior cartridge was the first game that we owned in my household. Uh, see, we open the chest here, Fortune smiles upon the broken head. Thou hast found the tablet. The tablet reads as follows. I am Erdrick, and thou art my descendants. Now, in the original Japanese, that was Lodo instead of Erdrick. So, just remember that the proper name is Lodo, but that didn't, uh, for whatever reason, make it over to North America. Uh, and in the West here, we got Erdrick instead. Uh, three items were needed to reach the Isle of Dragons, which is south of Breconair can actually see that from Breconary. I gathered these items, reached the island, and there defeated a creature of great evil. Now I have entrusted the three items to three worthy keepers. Their descendants will protect the items until thy quest leads thee to seek them out. When a new evil arises, find the three items then fight. Yes, Erdrick has left us a literal call to adventure. In tablet form. So let us begin the journey to find the three MacGuffins. Uh, they're actually not MacGuffins. Uh, they, well, I mean, I guess one is a MacGuffin. 
and we will discover those as it continues, but for now, we're just going to work our way out of the cave. Even with a map, that little bit of light can lead us to dead ends because there's so much we can't see. Well, thanks for joining me this time. And uh, next time, we are going to advance to the next area and check out what's happening there. So until then, thank you for joining me here. See you later.